2017 seems like such a long time ago already, but it was a year kicked off by a massive international phenomenon known as the Women's March and then ended with something called Me Too, a Me Too movement exploding into our media, our dinner conversations, and of course our Twitter feeds and social media. But as we all know, movements and moments aren't monoliths and perspectives on this one even less so. My next guest has been writing on sex, culture, and politics for years, so you can bet she has some thoughts on this <laughs> moment. Her latest for The Nation magazine is titled What We Don't Talk About When We Talk About Me Too. Joanne Rikajewski is coming back on the show, not for her first <laughs> time. Joanne, glad to have you. Thank you, Laura. So I have to say, I wanted to have this conversation because I read your piece and I thought, oh, there's going to be such foment about this, what, what Joanne has written. There's going to be people talking about it mm. all over. And I just didn't hear enough discussion yeah. or any discussion, really. Yeah. I called you up. You hadn't heard much either. So we had thought of having a whole panel discussion mm -hmm. um, because I do think there are as many perspectives on this moment as there are women, mm -hmm. <laughs> frankly, and probably men, too. Um, but in the end, we decided, let's just talk. Um, you bring up some really important questions. I particularly appreciate the way you write about power. Um, and we want to talk on this program a lot about, well, what do we do next? So mm -hmm. it's important to see where we start. I want you to start by just reading the very beginning, which ends, this is an invitation. So to just read that to clue people who perhaps have the same okay. story. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Okay, so this is how the story begins. Amid the chorus of stories that define the Me Too phenomenon, there remain other unattended stories these others do not displace the chorus. They do not say you are wrong, shut up. They do not exist in the world of be quiet or be good. They do not deny the reality of men's age-old power over women or conformity as a silencing force. They say power is cunning. Power is a hydra. It has more heads than any story or group of stories can describe. They say history does too. They invite us to inspect the Hydra. What follows is my invitation. Why did you feel the need to, read, to write this piece? Well, I mean, like you said, I've been writing about sex, culture, politics for a long time. I had a regular feature at The Nation called Carnal Knowledge, which I'd like to restart. But, um, uh, but I've covered a lot of sex scandals. I've covered a lot of what I call sex panics. Um, and uh, so, you know, it, it's kind of like you, I couldn't mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. um, but also I was, the reason for that particular beginning was because, um, I, you know, I was really frustrated by the way in which there seems to be uh, a monolithic uh, take, even though, as you say, there's not. I mean, even though there are, are many, many views. Um, but I felt like in the media um, and, by that, it's many, many forms. Right. Uh, you know, one sort of set of stories was taking uh, prominence, and one kind of very old argument or old um, kind of arc of of explanation was um, was being advanced. And so uh, I thought, well, actually, you know, this is a complicated, complex subject. Sex is a complex subject. Violence, power, is a very yeah. a complex subject. And so I called the story What We Don't Talk About When We Talk About Me Too because I really wanted to invite a larger discussion. Mm. You quote Barbara Smith and the Combat yes. River Collective. Barbara Smith of Women of, T Women of Color, Kitchen Table Press, mm -hmm. um, the Combat River Collective, a, a, a statement that came out in the 70s from black feminists. You quote that statement, in fact, that she had a big hand in writing, um, saying you can't, uh, you can't work on one vector of power um, or of oppression, oppression alone without right. talking about how they intersect. Right. Is that what you right. think is happening here? No, I don't think that's what's happening here. I mean, I think it's interesting because um, I think, you know, Kimberly Crenshaw's use of the term intersectionality has a lot of um, repetition. I mean, it's, it's, it's spoken of a lot. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, mm -hmm. It's a kind of word you can say. I mean, one of the actresses at uh, the Oscars mentioned it, you know. But but just mentioning it doesn't mean it's um, it's it's really part of uh, the analysis. 
and I don't believe, uh, I believe frankly that the dominant discussion uh, of Me Too uh, has been driven by white middle class feminists who have a very, you know, sort of liberal, conventional, and rather dangerous at times um, uh, sort of politics. Very narrow, uh, not certainly uh, about intersecting aspects of oppression. And, and, and you know, we see that in, uh, <laughs> you know, in just a very recent, uh, a recent case of, uh, of, of um, the new um, nominee for the CIA. So Gina Haspel is nominated to be head the CIA, and Gina Haspel is a torturer. I mean, straight up, she's a torturer. She ran a torture site for the CIA. And one of Eric Holder's assistants said um, that we think she has learned from those mistakes. And Diane Feinstein says, you know, we think she's conscientious, and that shouldn't pass the thing. You know, so torture is just a mistake or just something you can get over. But you know, sexual harassment is just something that is now. Okay. All right, now, but you're I jumping. Am so, not, so, so, so I'm not. Uh, is, it, I wrote a whole book about Bush women and how <laughs> you kind of can sort of gender wash those right. reactionary policies by saying, well, at least it's a woman. Yeah. But Let's get back to Me Too for a minute. Though. Okay. Because yeah, that was a there is a powerful but. piece of what you're saying that you cannot, and what Barbara Smith said about you can't be just talking about one vector of oppression without talking about all of them. Right. And your piece is in its strongest parts, I believe, really calling for looking at this whole structural uh, picture. At the same time, I've heard from lots of people, yeah, but this one piece of that structure hasn't been talked about for decades and centuries. At least we're tackling that now. And are you saying that we should stop until we can overturn no, the whole apple? I mean, no. I think that that's, you see, that's always the thing. It's like, oh, well, uh, you say we just should shut up. So again, okay, so you going start back. start by saying that going back, about I, I started by saying, this does not say shut up. This does not say be quiet. This certainly does not say be good. Uh, I am not denying the reality of sexual harassment. I'm not denying the reality of sexual assault, of rape, of all those things. I think it is interesting that, and it always tells you something about the politics, when you have to qualify. You always have to say, look, I'm against violence. This is not to say I'm for sexual harassment. Of course, any, any decent, ethical, ordinary person is not for sexual harassment, violence, rape, murder. But you don't have to say, look, I'm against murder to talk about how, uh, you know, panics around crime might have driven, um, uh, you know, society uh, off the, the rails. You don't have to say, uh, when you're talking about terror, you can, you, you always have to say, look, I'm against terror to mm -hmm. say, let's see what Let's see what else there is besides the explosion of the Twin Towers. So here I'm saying, okay, let's, let's look at, the, you want to talk about power, mm -hmm. let's look at power. You want to talk about patriarchy, let's look at patriarchy. Patriarchy doesn't mean it's all run by men. Patriarchy is quite often, um, you know, facilitated by women. It's, it's, and as I see it, uh, the ultimate patriarchal power is the power of the state. Mm -hmm. And what is the ultimate power of the state it's the power to punish. So let's talk about, you have a great line in there where you say nothing says patriarchy better than the police state yeah. or bigger than the police yeah. state. Talk about that part of it. I mean, I, I, I resonated very strongly with the part of your piece that says we have got to get beyond simply punishment or this is about yeah. punishment. What else do we need to be talking about? Well, I mean, I think it's important to see it in terms of of history, this is not its separate thing. So when people say, oh, you saying, you know, we shouldn't talk about this one piece of it. No, we should talk about this one piece of it. But, um, but let's, let, can we have a reasoned conversation? Can we have a conversation that's not based on narrative alone? That's not based on personal stories that are, you know, multiplying by the millions, um, that are not, uh, that is not uh, sort of mediated totally by a media that is interested only in those emotional stories. So are you saying that where's the due process piece? Like why aren't we? Well, you know, due process, you know, people, people say, oh, well, you know, this isn't, this isn't a court. This isn't a courtroom. So uh, someone from the Washington Post says, let's not dither about guilt or innocence. So I'm, I'm saying, no, let's look at this historically. 
Let's look at this in terms of state power. Let's look at this in terms of patriarchy. And if you look at it in terms of sex and power and patriarchy in the state and punishment, you have to see it as part of a, you know, I would say roughly 50-year uh, stretch of serial sex panic. But I think there's a big difference, I have to say, between the kinds of policies, and we have lots of sex panic policies, the, like those that criminalize anybody who has been accused by anyone, pretty much, mm -hmm. of not telling them that they're HIV positive. Mm -hmm. We have people in prison today right. and identified as sex offenders in their communities today on the basis of a he said, she said, or usually he said, he, he said, he said, he said. Um, allegation mm -hmm. around AIDS um, mm -hmm. ex Exposure, right. whether or not anyone's been exposed at all. So um, those e panics exist. But I think here we're talking about people who have not been believed, no, have not been taken it's seriously. It's not a question of what's true or not. It or who, no, it's not a question. It's, it's a question of, how, of what the features of the discourse are. Uh -huh. So if the features of the discourse are emotion, if the features of the discourse are uh, the, the making of monsters, there is a monster, mm -hmm. uh, there are victims, um, Punishment is uh, is seen as necessary, whether that's sh naming and shaming, or whether that's criminalizing, as in the HIV case, which you've written about. Yeah, which I've written about. Um, you know, and these features always attend these panics. So, uh, and and very key feature of them is that the accusation is meant to equal truth, and that the accusation alone is meant to encourage belief. Belief is a very big uh, aspect of every sex panic. And again, I, I should probably say, you know, Judith Levine, the author um, uh, and sex radical and very smart woman, um, has said, you know, well, this isn't just a sex panic. It's all one 40-year sex panic. I'd say it's 50 years. I'd say it begins with sexual psychopath but attacks against gay people. No, no. You know, I there's think a difference. You You've got no, 80 it's, women accusing Harvey Weinstein. I don't. You've got oh. a, a, a silence being broken that has not been broken by these women against these sorts of people in power, meaning mm -hmm. these women against mm -hmm. men in power. This hasn't happened yet, so I'm just, con I'm just. It makes me nervous to 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 sort of lump it into a con continuity Why? of 150. Why? Years because the super has been predators in place under patriarchy. Well, I mean, because the super predator, uh, uh, you know, panic in the 1990s, that was the cause. That was, you know, seen to drive the uh, necessity for uh, the 1994 That's right. crime criminal bill. justice act. Right. And the Violence Against Women Act was folded into that. Um, the Violence Against Women Act, you could say, was put in there to co-opt feminists, but feminists had already, white, middle class, standard issue, liberal feminists, had already been driving victims' rights. Right. Um, had already Black been feminists driving, were against the incarceration well, exactly, aspects of that. Exactly. In the piece, I say, what might feminism look like? What might our conversation look like? And of course, this is a mind game, right? This is, a, this, is, uh, this is an imaginative leap. But really, I think it's important to think about what might feminism have looked like and what might this conversation look like if um, Barbara Smith and the Kambahis' conception of power, conception right. of feminism, conception of liberation, sexual liberation, human liberation, anti-capitalism, yeah. um, you know, uh, uh, Got it. Uh, equality. And maybe it's not too late. Well, maybe it's not too late. So. I mean, maybe that's what is coming out of here. I mean, look at this. Look, the Me Too, I mean, I I'm doing my best here to bring the critiques that I believe have been brought to your piece. Mm -hmm. We are also talking about some of the strengths in the piece. I'm hoping this sparks a conversation mm -hmm. rather than shuts one down. Um, the Me Too movement has been very interesting in the sense that while the public profile is largely white women, mm -hmm. Me Too, the hashtag was Tarana Burks, right. started by African American right. women for young right. African American women. It's the farm worker women right. of Immokalee and elsewhere who have been bringing it to the attention of Hollywood and getting them to do the right thing. I mean, there are some, is there some possibility that out of all of this broiling, we could develop the kind of liberation policy? I would like about? to think so, <laughs> but I am not optimistic. Why not? I'm not optimistic because I think, um, as another friend of mine, Tracy Kwan, uh, the novelist and, um, you know, sex worker advocate always says, when the political subject is sex, the response is panic. Right. And, and it's not that there aren't 
of lots of people who are doing good work and thinking strategically and thinking uh, in terms of these uh, overlapping oppressions. Uh, but there is no left. The left doesn't control the media. The left doesn't control the discourse. And I think... Uh, so I what think you see down the pike negative scenario is what? Um, I think the, um, you know, the, the, the drive of it is uh, much less, um, uh, you know, much less human uh, physicality. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's just going to be the default. I already feel like, oh my God, I'm a real hugger, and I feel like, oh my God, I better not hug people. Now, I know people would scream people listening are probably to this, screaming. right? They, yeah, and you are screaming here <laughs> thinking about this. But it's, it's, it's the way, okay, the sex panic around, around daycare, you know, drove a whole lot of people out of yeah. daycare. And it also drove a lot of people, especially men, uh, as did the, the panics around, you know, pedophiles, you know, male uh, homosexual perverts with children, you know, that whole frenzy, which was the driving, organizing force of the right, total yeah. Uh, yeah. ridiculous, but anyway, uh, caused people to worry about having anything to do with children, having anything to do with, you know, certainly not wanting to touch them. Uh, I mean, I think... But you could the say, so, the po so to come back to the positive scenario, which is our strong suit here on the mm -hmm. Laura Flanders show. Yeah. Um, I hear you. We have an, a carceral state run under, under patriarchy and it's capitalist white patriarchy to boot. You're right. I, but that sentence, nothing reads patri patriarchy stronger than the, 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 the police state, was the one I pulled out yeah. to, to encourage people to read your piece. We're dealing with the deck we have. Okay, and so is in there the deck a way okay, so that in we could look also at the same history and say, well, but we also saw a anti homophobia movement right. that became more liberational, having gone started liberational, got a little retro, mm -hmm. got a little bit may, maybe more mm -hmm. liberational. We're mm -hmm. getting there maybe. Yeah. Um I was against gay marriage, but that's mm -hmm. a whole nother story. Yeah. Um I'm for it really. <laughs> um, definitely is an option. Um is it possible we're on a we're just at a moment? And well, okay, I think let's say let's say that that there was serious uh, there were serious resources, serious interest uh, in in developing restorative justice models and in transformational justice models. Those have also come out of largely communities of color. Um, maybe people should be and, careful about who they touch and how in the workplace. Of, of course, they should be, but um, but I think. Uh, I mean, I don't see us moving toward freedom in general. I see us moving toward chains in general, in everything. I see the specter of fear haunting uh, our society, in our politics, in our, in our discourse, uh, in our se consideration of sexuality. Uh, I see the workplace as a generally dangerous place. Um, and a, a place of great humiliation and um, and and uh, insecurity. And so I think, okay, so if we're going to talk about punishment, let's think about what would it mean to, can we think about alternate models? Can we think about what restorative justice in various places would mean? And can we think about taking it seriously? Can we think about, um, you know, uh, sort of reducing uh, the um, the level of you know fear at work in general, and therefore maybe increasing workers' power. I don't believe just if you have you know a union, everything will be fine. Union, I am good. all for unions. <laughs> I am all for unions. I believe people should organize everywhere, but I don't believe it's it's a yeah. sort of solution. But I believe if we're going to talk yeah. about sexual harassment in the workplace, for instance, let's talk about the workplace. Let's talk about the, what I call the, when I talk about these Hydra heads, you know, the Hydra is this monster, you know, that uh, Hercules battles and he kill, chops off one head and another comes I think up. she was a female characterized female, but we don't need to go there. Well, we don't need to go there. I didn't, it was a monster, so, you know. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I talk about the, the sort of, uh, you know, hydra head of, of the working day. Yeah. Uh, I think the working day is depleting. I think it's hu uh, humiliating in a whole lot of ways. All right, so let me just drag you back because we're running out of time. Is it possible?
to be working on these bigger pictures and also to go after individual predators like Harvey Weinstein, jo Donald Trump. Um, you know, I... Uh, can't, those, can't those two things happen? I, Weinstein, I'm, Weinstein is not exactly in misery right now. He's in some fairly comfy... Uh, yeah, but I... Place, okay, I so this is... So here's, you know, the, the really hard line that I, I draw. And yes, certainly, you know, one can go after criminals. But I'm not going to sit here because there are 80 people and say, oh, well, he is a violent criminal. I think that is absolutely the bedrock of, um, of sex panic, which is that, you know, accusation equals truth. You know, there is a presumption of guilt. And that presumption of guilt carries out beyond just these discussions. And the fact that there's been a presumption of lack of credibility on, for, about women for time immemorial doesn't shift anything in your view. No, I mean, I think there has to be a way in which, you know, we are skeptical of accusations and we are skeptical of people who say, oh, no, I didn't do anything. So there has to be a way in which, you know, we can consider uh, the, the source, consider the evidence. But no, just because there are 80 people, I've, I've covered a lot of uh, scandals. And I've seen ones where there are numerous victims, and those victims aren't always real victims. So I, I, I wait for the evidence. All right, so we will be skeptical. We will be restorative. We will look at big systems of oppressions interlocking, and we will continue reading and thinking and talking about Me Too and lots of other things as well. Thank you so much, Joanne. Thank Great you, Laura. You. you can Great find the article, and you can communicate with us at mm -hmm. our website. That's LauraFlanders.org. <laughs> Thanks.